Uh, my name is Mike. I am the voice and the owner of Lure Fishing for Rass UK. Um, today's video is just a quick video uh, with the help of Adrian Evans, who is the constant angler on YouTube, but he's also one of the admins for Lure Fishing for Rass UK on Facebook. So today's video is all about um, different types of rigs and explaining how they're used, how they're made up. Um, if you do like the video, please don't hesitate to give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel. And if you've got any questions, please do ask them below. Um, over to you, Adrian. Texas rig. What does the Texas rig comprise of? A weedless hook, a bead, a Texas weight, or an egg sinker, and the option of a bobber stopper or not. To this rig, we thread our chosen lure on to the weedless hook which in this case I've removed the barb from because we always advise that. Now to do that you place the hook point in the centre of the head of the bait looking at the length of your hook keeper section here put your hook in roughly that deep pull it out of the belly of the bait thread the bait up and over the hook keeper section lay the lure alongside the hook mark where you'll find where the hook would go through the lure and push through the middle of the bait thus texas rigging your bait excuse the lead sliding around the next step is to either sit it in the recess that happens to be in some baits so you're pretty weedless there or to expose the bait so burying the hook point into the bait which you do by pulling the plastic towards the eye of the bait and dropping it onto the hook point and there you can see you have a totally weedless bait now without it pegged you can see the lead moves so if you imagine the leads on the bottom and the fish grabs the uh, grabs the lure it can pull there's there's less resistance there if you peg the lure obviously they'll feel the weight quicker but there are occasions when you want to use the Texas rig in really, really rough ground and you don't want your, if I pull this apart again, you don't want your bait up here and your weight hung up three or four feet away on something else and neither reaching the bottom. So that is the occasion that I would use a pecked Texas rig. Now we have several options with this. We don't have to use an EWG hook, we could use a weedless worm hook. We could use a different variety of weights. We could use tungsten weights, which are the best weights, but very expensive, but you get the most feel from. You'll feel the bottom more through a tungsten weight than you will a lead weight. You can also use a brass weight, which will give you a different sound, and some say the best sound, against the bead. Because this clanking of the bead and the weight against each other is what very often can trigger a bite or a response from a fish. They'll f brass are very inquisitive and will go find that sound or be made aware of that sound and then notice the lure and go and have a go at the lure. Then what happens when the fish bites? When the fish bites, the bait collapses down exposing the hook point. You'll feel it, you'll set the hook. So there you have it. That is the Texas rig. So moving on from the Texas rig, which we have below us here with the bobber stop above, if, which is optional, we can use a Carolina rig. Now a Carolina rig, or the one I have here, if you see, I have two bobber stops trapping the bead and the weight and a bobber stop above. I usually distance that a little because you still get the clacking effects of the sound from the bead and the weight hitting. Now, a Carolina rig detaches the lure from the weight. So, a bonus with that is your lure acts more natural, especially on the fall, because your weight will hit the bottom, followed by your lure, which will sink slowly and more naturally. And sometimes that's a presentation that can really turn the fish on. You can, with this adjustable Carolina rig, you can set the length of your trace, thus increasing the time your lure spends to sink and fishing at different depths whereas with a Texas rig your weight's pretty much going to go down and the lure follow it there might be a bit of slack here but 
you're dictating the fall or the time it takes for the bait to fall with the length of your trace of the Carolina rig. Obviously, the longer you make it, the more tangles you're going to get. I suggest stopping the whole thing just before it hits the water, which will straighten it out. That helps with tangles. If you're getting tangles with this, which I don't seem to, all you do is replace these two bobber stops with a swivel. Now, why would we use it and where would we use it? I don't use it in the thickest to cover. I use it in uh, clean to broken ground, fishing around rocks, uh, but beside structure where the ground is clear enough for me to present this rig. It looks as though it's as weedless as a Texas rig, but the Texas rig is in fact more weedless. It's not bad. And the benefit of this is if you, you're fishing with this trace, you can present a bait up alongside a rock face or some, some other form of structure, the weed line. And if you were a diver and you had a look and went down and saw where wrasses are, they're not always banged down on the deck very often. They're holed up in little, little, little holes and things like that under ledges in a reef. So it's a way of presenting a bait off the bottom by using a floating bait of some description, either brought off the shelf or with a tube, a bit of foam inserted in here. So the Jika rig, well the Jika rig comprises of your weedless hook, one or two split rings, in this case I've put two split rings together. Your hook is placed onto a split ring and your weight, in this case, placed onto a separate split ring. In this instance it is a nasty bomb with a swivel which I find very good, help with tangles. You could just have one split ring and a drop shot weight that you've opened up. But if I show you what I found the problem to be with this is you don't have as much movement as you do with two clips. This hook can go all over the place. Another option I've been playing with of late is to use a breakaway clip with the weight, which I prefer to be an arsley bomb here or a swiveled weight of some description placed in the end of the clip and the hook the same. This seems to fit through the uh, eye of the hook quite nicely on a standard EWG hook. These are the Snowbee hooks. Although you can buy hooks with bigger eyes, just make sure for wrasse they're heavier gauge. For other species it's not so important. But as you can see that's quite neat. You can assemble it, disassemble it easily on the bank and you can take all of this off change the size of your hook, size your weight very easily. You could also remove it all and clip on a plug if you wanted to have a go at bass on the day. So it's a very versatile uh, setup. I haven't used it that much. Uh, just the one trip so far, everything seemed good. But um, yeah, something to play around with there. Why do we use Jika rigs? Well, Jika rigs present our bait more horizontally. They keep our weight with our bait. Uh, which is good in some scenarios, such as fishing in very uh, deep water into deep, uh, tall rack or weed, where you don't want your weight to separate from your bait, as it might in an unpacked Texas rig. The horizontal uh, way that the bait sits off of the Jika rig is a more natural presentation. You can also vary your line ties. If you're just dragging along the bottom, it's not going to matter too much. You can tie to the end here. If you're fishing deeper water, I tend to tie at the top here. And the reason I do that is because you, you can influence the bait more and tap this, this weight on the bottom a little easier. So there's the Jika rig. The Cheb rig. The Cheb rig comprises of a weight, a clip which sits inside the weight, your hook, with a weedlessly rigged lure. So if you can see the assembled weight here, it's quite small that one, the wire sits through the middle of the weight and you want your hook to be sat on this upturned section of wire. Not at this end, this is where you tie your line. So if we try and assemble this now, turn your bait upside down, pass onto the wire over the back and flip it over and now you'll see it's facing upwards the correct way 
squeeze the parts of the clip together push into the widest end of the slot if they are different push through and there you have it now you can tie directly onto here you could put this on a clip then you can change out easier I prefer to keep things simple and just tie direct like this if you can see you can use a variety of lures any lures you choose to be honest some better than others paddle tails tubes great for this crawls excellent for it what you basically created is an articulated jig head with lots of movement for your bait it's a quick change rig it's a versatile rig it is not as snag proof as your Texas rigs or other rigs, but it is a really good rig all the same. An important thing to remember when wrasse fishing is the cheb that you use. The wire inside the cheb needs to be thick. I think you can, just by doing that, you can clearly see the difference in gauge wire. We found with finer wired, maybe cheaper chebs, this wire will bend out with wrasse, whereas this cheb, which unfortunately, I can't remember where I source from, has nice thick wire and won't bend out. Uh, next is the Nico rig. Or what is the Nico rig? I'm sure lots of you already know. You basically have a weight in one end of the worm, Senko, whatever bait you want to use, and to that you attach a hook usually about a third of the way to halfway up the bait and attach that to your leader. What this does is makes the head of the bait weighty so that when you pull on the line it bounces the lure around and it gives a very natural look to the worm. The top of the worm will stand upright and flop around as though some sort of worm trying to get back into the bottom I guess. There are several hooks that you can use, obviously when we're ras fishing, we're fishing in amongst or alongside, that's where I would use it, alongside rock faces, weed lines, that kind of thing, not in the real thick of it, you're going to lose too many. But we need some sort of weedless hook. I have two versions here. This setup I put on a trick worm, a wave worm trick worm, one of my favourites these and if you can see it has a hook with a little weed guard it's basically a big wacky rig hook that they've made weedless by putting uh, two bits of uh, stiff nylon there to uh, make it as weedless as possible to the bottom of that is a nail weight if i unscrew this a bit you'll see what i mean you can buy these and they're basically weights like such which you push in screw in to the head of your bait quite simply done <coughs> as you can see with this one I've just hooked it through a portion of the worm uh, and make sure you hook upwards so the point of your hook is facing upwards as such trick worms are excellent for this because usually they have a floating bulbous tail helps it stand up and I find this particularly effective in the winter when fish aren't wanting to move as much. You can shake, bounce this around in front of their faces and they'll tend to have it. This trick worm in particular. The other option I've got on here is a cheaper option. So instead of a nail weight, I've just got a screw. Which I've just screwed into the end to give me the weighting I want. I'd suggest you use stubbier screws, thicker, thicker stubbier screws or screws to suit the bait that you're using, slim or wider profile. So this is a wider profile bait than our trick worm. This is a, one of my favourite Senkos. And if you see what I've done there is I put an O-ring on it. You can buy these in the shops all over the place. You can buy different sizes to fit different worms. And what this does is instead of hooking so much into the plastic of the worm, which you can still do if you wish. You can hook just under the O-ring like that and it saves your worms. You don't lose so many worms on the strike. 
you still get to keep your worm most of the time they don't rip as easily as with the hook just in there with the trick worm we all also notice is this is something i'm experimenting with at the moment these were off aliexpress they are weedless worm hooks and basically what they have is a wire guide which you depress put over the point of the hook makes the hook weedless when the fish bites it depresses that freeing up the hook point which you then set in its mouth now i would prefer a wider gate one than this and i'm sure some of you perch guys will um, suggest some to me or possibly even make some of my own up on a similar principle with this with a couple bits of uh, fluorocarbon so there's your nico rig don't use it in the thick stuff use it along the edges around rocks use it to sight fish fish use it in the winter Cheers. Next we have the split shot rig. And as you can see, this is probably the simplest rig you can tie. Tie your line direct to your lure. Pop a split shot on the line. This split shot can be uh, placed anywhere on your line. It's a real finesse -y, uh, rig. I once had my ass handed to me by a youngster fishing exactly like this when I was using Texas rigs for ass. He was catching, I wasn't. I switched to this very finesse rig. I started the catch. You can, as I said, move the split shot closer or further away from your lure. The closer you move it to the lure, the less freedom your lure has, but the more sensitivity you have to bites. It's what we call a telltale shot. Another aspect of the rig is this split shot will catch in things as you're pulling it in it's coming into contact with reed rack in the bottom and it will kick your lure off at different angles and sometimes that can attract the fish also if it becomes snagged it's usually possible that it will come off so last in this rig series uh, because it is the rig I use the least is the drop shot rig I'm probably talking to the uh, converted already here but as you can see with this, in this instance, I have an EWG hook attached to a piece of wire that has had an eye look put on either end so that the hook can be tied on the bank directly to your rod on your leader and another piece added to your weight. Now why the drop shot rig? Why would we use the drop shot rig? It's an adjustable rig. We can adjust the distance between the weight and the hook, therefore adjusting the distance your law is from the bottom. So you can fish anything from inches is here, which works, to three, four foot off the bottom if you want, or more. It depends on the depth of water you're fishing in and whereabouts in that column of water that the fish are sitting. In this case, we have a weedless EWG hook you'll struggle sourcing these so there are alternatives to this you can use a polymer knot to put this EWG hook on I'm sure some of you do or well, there is a knot which I prefer when fishing in freshwater called the Japanese drop shot knot either of those work this is just a convenient thing for me when I'm ras fishing I can keep these in a packet tie up in no time rather than messing around with knots on the rocks so retrieves you can drag along the bottom stop and shake there's one you can hop it along the bottom up and down and shake or as I very often do is fish a semi slack line as I call it and tap the slack which won't move the weight but will move the line and get your lure to act very nice. Thanks Adrian for doing that video um, if you enjoyed the video please do give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and share it with your mates and if you've got any questions please don't hesitate to ask them below many thanks bye now